Hello and welcome to yesterday's airlines. In this video it's time to check out another one of my fleets of model aircraft in 400 scale and this time around we're going to be checking out one of the big four US trunk airlines, American Airlines itself. And if you've watched other videos you'll know that the major US trunk airlines are stored in the big tall cabinet that's right in the center of frame here so that is where we will be finding the American Airlines fleet so let's Get over there and check out that fleet now. So American Airlines, as I said, was one of the big four trunk airlines from the regulated era. The others were Transworld, which you can see above American here, uh, Eastern and United, which you can see beneath. But it is American Airlines, which is the subject to this video. And as you can see, they have the third shelf down beneath Pan Am and Transworld. And you can see that there's a good number of silver American Airlines aircraft here. So just give a quick overview, as always, my fleets are organized from left to right with the aircraft from the oldest historical period to the newest, and the fleet here moves from the uh, mid 40s through all the way up into the 1990s and the late 90s. And I guess technically just slipping into the early 2000s there. So that's a quick overview of the fleet, but what we're gonna do is take a look through and be more specific, check out the models that I own for American Airlines. So stay tuned, that'll be the next part of this video. So I'll start with the oldest portion of the fleet in terms of the years that the aircraft were in service. And you can see here, we've got a selection of classic piston prop liners with a couple of turboprop electras and early jets. So we'll start over on the left with the oldest aircraft, which is a Douglas DC-3. And American was always an airline which actually got rid of these older aircraft quite quickly. Um, this one is wearing the scheme which was worn in the 1930s and throughout the war period. And that scheme was slightly altered to take uh, or change the American Airlines um, logo, which you can see on the rear of the aircraft here, and take it outside of a roundel um, pretty soon after the war, as you can see here, worn by this uh, C-54 or DC-4 here. And again, um, the DC-4s didn't stay with American for a long period of time. They were almost all gone by the end of the 40s, one of the first airlines to retire the type. Now behind that, we've got a couple of other aircraft, which are actually from a different airline, American Overseas, but obviously heavily affiliated with American Airlines and an airline which was um, taken over by Pan Am. So we've got uh, a Dragon Wings Connie and an Aero Classics Stratocruiser. But moving back to the standard American Airlines, American was a bit of a pioneer, it took on aircraft quite quickly, and it was a very early operator of the Convair 240, as you can see here. And this scheme is kind of known, I think, as the lightning bolt. In a sense, you've got this very thin cheat line which runs along with the jagged kind of lightning edges and then opens up onto the nose cone. And you've got the, the rudder color here as well. Behind the uh, Convair, we've got a DC-6. And then behind that, we've got some DC-7Cs getting into that period towards the end of the 50s when airlines were still buying piston liners but ordering jets. And they very quickly were turned into freighters, which you can see the DC-7C behind is as jets came into service. So that is the, um, the piston portion of the fleet there. American was one of the airlines to order Lockheed Electras, and you can see that the, uh, the livery was only slightly modified for the Electra. The uh, area of red on the tail was expanded, and here's one in the delivery colors. And then behind it, we've got a couple of the other earlier jets. Unfortunately, turbojet 707s are very poorly represented in 400 scale, so these aren't by any means the earliest jets that were operated by American, but there's a Convair 990 behind the Electra, a plane which American really was not interested in when it was realized that it couldn't match the performance that was promised. Behind it, we've got a Boeing 720. 
And here we've got a quite a late model American um, 707-320. And that's wearing the next scheme along, the, uh, the Astro Jet scheme with this different logo on the tail. Still got kind of lightning bolt-esque um, cheat line element, but it no longer um, goes onto the nose cone. Instead, we've got this round all on the tail. I think it was called the squashed egg at times. Not a particularly popular scheme. But if we move out, that scheme was applied to quite a large number of the fleet. Obviously, the 990's got it, as you can see here. It was applied to the earliest 727s, and this is an era classic example. Another early jet that was acquired by American was the BAC-111, and that bought the scheme as well. And it also got on to the Electras as well. Now, most of the models here are Aero Classics or use Aero Classics mold. So far, the models we've looked at, the only one that isn't Aero Classics, I think, was the Constellation in the far left corner. I think everything else was, though. I think maybe technically this um, Electra is Gemini. Um, it's using the Aero Classics mold. Moving to the right hand side, we've got a 77100 also in the same scheme. But then, of course, you can see in the background, as the 60s moved on, American would make a change and in 1968 would introduce a new scheme. So that's what we'll move on to next. So in April 1968, American unveiled a new scheme designed by Massimo Vignelli. I actually don't know if it's got an official name. Um, I think it's broadly called the Red, White and Blue Scheme. And this scheme obviously would be worn by American Airlines for a huge period of time, well into the next century. And the rest of my fleet all wear the same scheme with the classic AA on the tail and the Eagle above it. Now, obviously, uh, as it's well known, originally Vanelli designed this without the Eagle on the tail, but um, staff prefer the scheme with it and that change was made. And now if we're looking at the models that I have here, again, most of these are Aero Classics, but I'll point out when they're not. And um, we've got a 727-100 here, and you can see that the scheme just looks a bit cleaner than the previous scheme. Behind that, there is a 727, an early 727, you can tell because it's all got AstroJet written on the front of the aircraft, and that is a Gemini Jets release. To the left, there is a 707, or possibly 720. I can't quite remember if this is meant to be a 100 or a 720. It's using the 720 mold. Behind that is the only 707 100 mold in 400 scale, and that's by Dragon Wings. And then there is also a Aero Classics um, 707 320. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. As you probably noticed, my wife decided to start hoovering directly above us. So um, I <laughs> had a word with her about that. Um, where was I? I was talking about um, that Aero Classic 707 and the new livery. Now, obviously, um, there are two things here which you'll notice, which I haven't discussed so far. And one is the fact that there's a 747. American was, again, one of the airlines which acquired 747s early. Never really had particularly good use for them since it didn't have international routes. But they acquired them nonetheless, and they only lasted for a relatively short period before they were divested. And this is a very nice 747, and that's by Dragon Wings. The other aircraft which stands out here is this Trans-Caribbean DC-8. Um, the DC-8 stretch never operated for American, but Trans-Caribbean was an airline that operated primarily down to the Bahamas and such in the Caribbean, as the name suggests, and was an airline acquired by American in, I think, 1972, something like that. But certainly late 60s, early 70s. So that's why she is present here amongst the American fleet. Moving across, I'll start at the back because that's uh, the oldest type. Obviously, a much more suitable type for American than the 747 was the DC-10, and this is a lovely example by Aero Classics. American, for many years, had quite a large freighter fleet, um, and here's a 707 and another Dragon 747. And moving forward, there is a later 727-200 here, and this one is a Gemini model. And then at the front, you can have not notice the fact that there is a McDonnell Douglas MD-80, which of course is an aircraft which became very iconic for American. And this model is by Dragon Wings. It's a model which was for a long time quite highly sought after and hard to find. Moving across, 
Um, and we're firmly into the 80s now, and uh, 737, 200 in American colors, but you can tell by the registration that it was not an American aircraft originally. It was one acquired with the merger with Air Cal. And they operate the 737s actually for a reasonably long period, along with some 146s and also 737-300s. I don't have either of those. And then we've got a more modern um, MD-80. We've got the screwdriver tail. This is a Gemini release. Behind that, there's a couple of American Eagle aircraft, a Shorts 360 and an ATR-42, and a very nice Gemini Jets 767 as well. Okay, now onto the last portion of the fleet over here. Um, we're moving into the 90s now. 757 would become a very important type for American Airlines, and here this is a beautiful NG Models release. Behind that, slightly more surprising, that American ordered 35 Airbus A300s, and initially they operated in this painted gray color scheme before eventually getting natural metal colors. In the back, there's one of a pair of 747 SPs that American acquired for operating their new long range network, and that's NG Models. So the last portion of the fleet you can see here, this is where my take the, uh, the timeline up to, it's about end of century or just beyond. You can see again that American was operating European types. They acquired 75, I think it was, Fokker 100s, and this is a model by Gemini Jets. They also became an important customer for the next generation 737, and here's an 800 by NG Models. They operated several aircraft in retro schemes, and this is a Gemini Jet 757, which will be replaced quite soon, I think, by an NG Models version of the same. And for the long-haul fleet, American obviously had another poor experience with an airliner like they had with the Convair 990 when they acquired a fleet of McDonnell Douglas MD-11s, which once again didn't meet their performance specifications, so did not last a long time. A much better aircraft for Americans' usage was the 777, and here is a 777-200 from Gemini Jets. And the last aircraft here is wearing a very non-standard scheme, and that is snuck down here. It is this McDonnell Douglas MD-87. This is a Dragon Wings release, and you can see with the unusual livery that it is one of the aircraft acquired with the takeover of Reno Air. So that's all of the aircraft I have for American Airlines. As always, there are no doubt a few gaps in the fleet here and there, um, which I would like to fill in time. Certainly, the most obvious probably is the lack of turbojet 707s, but they just don't really exist in the 400 scale at the moment, so it would be nice to have someone produce some turbojet 707s, such an important type. But otherwise, I'm reasonably happy with the fleet. I think it's very representative of the aircraft that American operated from 1945 through to the dawn of the jet age and then into the wide body era, deregulation and up to the turn of the century. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching another one of my fleet videos. I plan on doing more of these, so stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy them. Check out the website, yesterdaysairlines.com, for a load more information, including a detailed review of all the liveries that American Airlines has used over the years. Also, check out my Facebook page, at Yester Airlines. Check out the Instagram. And stay tuned for more of this kind of content. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the video. See you later.